Okay, so this is day two of our personal narrative writing that we've been working on. So today we're going to um, put a mixed up story in order to show the beginning, middle, and end. And we've talked about that before. We've talked about order of a story. What happened at the beginning, what happened in the middle, and what happened at the end. Your personal narratives that you write will also have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Let's look at what we learned yesterday. So I showed you a chart that looked similar to this, and we talked about how we're going to be working on a personal narrative. Let's remember what a personal narrative is. So a personal narrative tells about someone's real life experience, something that happened to them. Um, let's see. So today we're going to focus on another part of our, or feature of our personal narrative. Um, let's see. Oh, and before I change slides, look at our chart from yesterday. It tells me that personal narrative is a true story about an experience in your life. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and we will use words like I, my, me, we, first, then, next, last, finally, words like that. Because remember, it's personal. It's yours. It's your story. All right, so I want you to listen carefully as I read this story. It's called Bath Time. On Sunday, I gave my stinky dog Jeb a bath in the yard. Finally, he was clean. He jumped out of the tub and ran off. Then he tried to get out. First, I put him in a tub filled with soapy water. I hope he lets me give him a bath again. He tried to get out. Silly dog. Some of the bubbles got on his nose. He licked them. I held him down. All right, what did you think of the story? Did it make sense? If it didn't, why didn't it make sense? I want you to think about that for just a second. So here's what I noticed when I was reading the story. I saw words like, and I'm going to use my pen to show it. I saw words like, finally, but look, finally is at the beginning of our story. Finally is kind of like, last this happened. So would I tell something that happened last at the beginning of my story? Hmm. And then I see the word first. But first looks like it's at the middle of our, of our story. If I'm going to say what first happened... That should probably be at the beginning. First, I put him in a tub filled with soapy water. So, and then at the end of the story, it talked about how um, he licked the bubbles off that were on his nose. That sounds like more of something that might happen in the middle of the story, not the very end, because it said for it said. At the beginning, well, he jumped out in the tub of the tub and ran off. But now it's talking about at the end how he licked those bubbles off his nose. This story does not make sense because it's not in order. It doesn't, the beginning, the middle, and the end are all mixed up. So I want you to listen to the story again and see if you notice anything different this time. Bath time. On Sunday, I gave my stinky dog, Jeb, a bath in the yard. First, I put him in a tub filled with soapy water. Some of the bubbles got on his nose. He licked them off. Silly dog. Then he tried to get out. I held him down. Finally, he was clean. He jumped out of the tub and ran off. I hope he will let me give him a bath again. So what did you think of our story now? What did you think of our story? It makes a little bit more sense now. Now we have a beginning. And I know what happened at the beginning. She filled the bathtub 
with soapy water. And some of the bubbles got on his nose when she did that and he licked them off. And so I see first, oops, I see first at the beginning of my story where it should be. I see the word then in the middle. Then he tried to get out and I held him down. And I see the word finally. Finally, he was clean. So I have a beginning, I have a middle, and I have an end. And it's in order and it makes sense. So a personal narrative has sequential order. That means it's in, that means there's a first, a a beginning, a middle, and an end. That means the story is told in order that it happened. It's not all mixed up like the first story that I read. All right, so let me switch slides. So here's our story, or here's our anchor chart for the day. Personal narrative has a sequential order, a beginning, a middle, and an end. So beginning, on Sunday, I gave my stinky dog Jeb a bath in the yard. Look how they put it in green. There's the beginning of our story that we just listened to. First, oh, here's the middle. First, I put him in a bathtub with water. Some of the bubbles got on his nose and he licked them off. Silly dog. Then he tried to get out. I held him down. Finally, he was clean. So here's the middle of our story, kind of the real, the bulk of what happened. And the end At the end of the story, it told, it tells me that he jumped out of the tub and ran off. And I hope he will give me, he will let me give him a bath again. So our story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's very important in personal narratives. So watch me put a mixed up personal narrative in order. My story is called A Bad Day. All right, so these pictures tell a story about a little girl who was sick, but the order is all mixed up. We're going to read the story from left to right to show. And then next, we're going to put this story in order from the beginning, middle, and end. All right, so we can think as we are sequencing the story, and I'm going to put the numbers one through four in those boxes to show the order. All right, so let's read from left to right what our pictures say. Then he went to the store to get medicine. Finally, I went home to rest. I slept and slept. One day I woke up in bed feeling very sick. My mom took me to the doctor. Okay, so there's our sick little girl and it's all mixed up. I'm going to think about what might happen at the beginning. What might happen first? So... In order for her to go to the doctor and to get medicine and just to, to, to rest and sleep, 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 I first have to wake up knowing that I feel sick. So this one, I'm going to put a number one. This is the beginning of our story. One day I woke up in bed feeling very sick. Okay, so what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Next, well, is she gonna go to the store to get medicine first or will she go to the doctor first? I think that she's probably going to go to the doctor because the doctor's gonna tell the mom, this is the medicine that you need. So I'm gonna say this is the second part of the story. My mom took me to the doctor. And when I'm reading my other two parts, I haven't put in order. Then we went to the store to get medicine. Finally, I went home to rest. I slept and slept. So I see words like then and finally. I know finally is going to be the very last thing that's going to happen in the story. And she's not going to go home and rest and sleep before she gets that medicine from the doctor. So I'm going to say this happened after she went to the doctor and then after she got her medicine, she went home and rested. So let's read and see if that makes sense. I'll start with number one. One day I woke up in bed feeling very sick. My mom took me to the doctor. Then we went to the store to get medicine. Finally, I went home to rest. I slept and slept. I think that the story is in order from beginning, 
to middle to end. Let's look. So it is, look how um, they put our green box around the beginning of the story that we talked about. One day I woke up in bed feeling very sick. And then the middle, the middle of our story, here's what happened. Remember they went to the doctor and then they went to get the medicine. And then the end of the story is here in red. Finally, I went home to rest. I slept and slept. Now our story, it flows. It makes sense now. Look how the middle is bigger than the beginning and the end. Most times in a story, your middle has the bulk of what's happening. Um, all of those interesting details that are happening. So your middle is usually longer than the beginning and the end because it's got all the important stuff. So now it's our turn again to put up a mixed up personal narrative in order. I'm going to read the story from left to right and we'll see if it makes sense. I finally caught a big fish. I looked for a spot in the lake to fish. Then I put my hook into the water and waited. After I found a spot, I put a worm on my hook. So does this story make sense? It doesn't. Let's work to see what, how we can put this in our correct sequential order. We're going to put numbers one through four, just like we did um, with our last story to show the order. All right, so let's think about it. What would happen first when you want to go fishing? I think that it, when he's ready to fish, he wants to fish, that he's got to find that spot on the lake, that perfect spot where he's going to catch some fish. He has to find that spot first. He's not going to catch a big fish before he um, finds that perfect spot. So I think that this one right here has to be the beginning of our story. He looked for the spot in the lake to fish. And I'm going to keep going. I'm seeing words like then, finally, after. Those words are important. I know when I say finally, that that's going to be the last thing that happens. That's going to be the end of my story. So now I just have two more slides or two more little 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 pieces that I need to figure out well, what happened second and what happened third. So then I put my hook into the water and waited. Mm, my other piece tells me I put a worm on my hook. I think before he can put his hook in the water to wait that he has to put a worm on it. So this would be our second piece. So I looked for a spot on the lake to fish. After I found a spot, I put a worm on my hook. Then I put my hook into the water and waited. After I finally caught a big fish is our ending. So we've got it in order. Let's look at our next slide and make sure it makes sense. Uh, let's see. So beginning, I looked for a spot in the lake to fish. After I found a spot, I put a worm on my hook. Next, I put my hook into the water and waited. I finally caught a big fish. Yes, I think our, our story makes sense. Look at that. Look, remember what I told you? The middle part of our story is the, more, is the bigger chunk. It's going to have those more important details. Um, let's see. So we have two events in the middle and we only have one at the end that one event at the end of the story is where he finally caught that big fish so now it's going to be your turn in your binder you have two pages that look similar to this i want you to read each part of our mixed up story and i want you to cut out those parts of the story and put them in sequential order showing our beginning our middle and our end. Remember that the middle of the story is going to have two details. It's going to be bigger than the beginning and the end. Make sure you put them in the order that they happened. 
when you're done, submit your work to Google Classroom.